We're making bacon for this recipe today. And if you're anything like me and you've been emotionally traumatized by making bacon in a skillet on the oven and you don't wanna dodge bacon grease, there's a better way. Put it in the oven, 400 degrees. You line your baking sheets with foil. Um, you can put it on a rack on the baking sheet or not, I don't. And then about 14 minutes, flip it, another 14 minutes or so, 10 minutes, you just kinda gotta eyeball it based on your bacon doneness desires. And then you pull it out. And added benefit, you don't get popped by bacon grease, and then your oven smells like bacon for a few days, and that's fantastic. So save yourself the pain and put it in the oven. Let's get started on that recipe. Hi there, I'm Katie with Blackberry Hill, and this is the 2024 Baking Challenge, where I've selected 52 new recipes and a dog barking in the background. We're baking one new recipe every single week. I post the ingredients list on Wednesdays to Facebook and Instagram, and then Saturday around 9 a.m., between eight and nine, I post the video for that week's recipe. This is week number four, and we are making, okay, I can do this, maple molasses and bacon butter tarts. <laughs> and if that sounds weird to you, you're not alone. Um, I, I've gotten some raised eyebrows over this recipe, but I like bacon, I like butter. I'm sure that everything else is gonna go along great. So, let's get baking. Okay, for this recipe, you're gonna need a couple things. You're gonna need a 12 cup muffin tin. If you don't have that, two sixes will work great. I have these super old ones and that's fine because my bigger one is downstairs in storage. I'm not gonna worry about it. The other thing you're gonna need is a four inch round circle cutter. Doesn't have to be a cookie cutter. You could use a drinking glass, a wine glass. I don't know how big your wine glasses are. I don't judge. Um, have your little ruler and go around and look and see what you have that's four inches across. I found this. This is a cutter for, um, for turnovers. Um, it's a little bit bigger than four inches. It's closer to four and a half, but I'm just gonna roll with it. If you can't find anything, don't panic, okay? You're gonna take your dough, you're gonna roll it up into little balls, you're gonna smush it into your tin and press it up against the side to make a little crust. It's not a big deal, it's a little more time intensive, but you can still do this if you can't find a circle cutter, okay? So the other part of this recipe is that your dough is gonna to have to sit in the fridge for an hour. So definitely plan that into your timing, okay? Like for me, I just rolled out of bed, I got the beanie on, I got the pajamas on, and we're gonna make this dough and stick it in the fridge, and then I'm gonna get ready for the rest of the day, okay? Okay, great. Let's get to the recipe. All right, <clears throat> we have one and one fourth cups of all-purpose flour. We have one cup of what is supposed to be white whole wheat flour. I don't have white whole wheat flour, so I have just used the regular whole wheat flour, and that's okay. A half a teaspoon of salt, that's gonna get whisked up in there. I'm just gonna use my pastry cutter to mix it up because it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> it's very whisk-like, okay? You are also going to need 10 tablespoons of butter. Same thing like when we've been making our crust, if you were here for week two for the toaster tasty, tasty toaster tarts, we're making a pie crust essentially. Um, I did not cut my butter yet, so I have to do that. It's easier to cut it into little pats. And remember, one stick of butter is eight tablespoons. We need 10 tablespoons for this recipe. So we've got an entire stick of butter and then what's left in reserve. And you just wanna, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. You just want it slightly smaller so it's easier to crumble in.
Um, sometimes this is hard to do with my hands. And on those days, I will use the uh, shredder attachment on my KitchenAid mixer. And I will use that to shred the butter. And it's a lot easier to work in that way. Let's see here. You know you can cut right through the paper um, when you have to measure specific amounts of butter and it's not an entire stick. Keeps it together, keeps your hands from getting messy, although I'm in a hurry, so it doesn't really matter to me today. Because um, I got a lot of stuff to get done today. And I really want to get these tarts going. Okay, there's my 10 tablespoons of butter going in here. I already added my salt and both of my types of flour. And I don't have my apron on this morning. I'm sure I will fix that when we come back to do the filling later. All right, same thing. If you're making a pie crust, you want your cold butter. You don't want it melting on you. That gives you the nice flaky pie crust. That's the other reason that this is going to sit in the fridge for an hour. And here we go. Oof. This is hard work today. Have something to scrape your, you can, I suppose you could probably use a mixer for this. You just want to watch it. You don't want your, your butter chunks to get too small. <laughs> get out of there. My butter is very cold and that's okay. Also, you can cook your bacon ahead of time. You are going to need, um, I think it's half a cup of cooked crumbled bacon. So as you saw earlier, you can put your bacon in the oven. I don't like to fry bacon. Um, I hate getting popped by bacon grease and it's just makes me anxious. So it goes in the oven goes in the oven because that makes life easy. And then your oven smells like bacon for a few days anytime you turn it on and who doesn't love that? Of course, then it makes you hungry for more bacon, so there is a downside. Most of the time we eat turkey bacon here, but for this recipe, I went ahead and got regular bacon, the thick cut stuff, good stuff. All right, let's see here. Okay, my butter's not quite crumbly yet. <laughs> it's not quite there, I would say. It's getting there. Had some on the edges. <coughs> I think I inhaled flour earlier when I was measuring it out. And now it's in my lungs. There are worse things. Okay, now we're looking all crumbly. The other thing you're gonna need is very, very, very cold water. I've had my water in the fridge overnight. Make sure I don't have any giant lumps in here. Nope, I don't. Now, pie crust is not an exact science. Sometimes you have to add more water, sometimes you have to add less water. This calls for a fourth a cup of cold water, which I left in the fridge. So I'm gonna have to go get it. <laughs> Just make your water cold. That's all that matters. Cold water. Now this says to drizzle the cold water into the flour mixture and you're gonna toss it to moisten it. Sometimes you just gotta get in there with your hands, by the way, and that's okay. It's messy. I don't like doing it. Um, now I've never made this particular type of crust where you have the, the wheat flour too. So, I may have to add a little bit more water. It's really dry in here today. It's very dry in my house. So what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna mix this enough that it forms one big lump of dough. Okay, I am obviously not there yet and may require some more water. Let's see. 
says cohesive dough and I'm not there yet. I don't know if you can see mine is too dry. So I am definitely going to add some more water. Don't worry, my hands are clean. Yeah, I'm gonna need more water for mine and that's okay. That's okay. Again, humidity plays a big part in pie crust. It's weird, it's science, I know. We are lucky we have well water here and it just comes out of the tap really, really cold. So that might've been too much. <laughs> Don't do quite as much as that. Just a little bit at a time, little bit at a time should. That's, yeah, all right. And then if you do add too much water, add a little pinch of flour. It's kind of a back and forth. And uh, I have gotten into that sometimes where I've ended up with like almost an additional pie crust because I've added too much water and then I've added too much flour and then I've added too much water trying to correct. But I don't feel like I've done that this time. Skip this. And I'm just going to throw this on this plate once I get it into a cohesive lump. Here's my dog barking again. Um, and then it's just going to go sit in the fridge for an hour. Okay, almost there, I'd say. Maybe a little bit more water. Oh, no, maybe not. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to moisten my hands a little bit and use that to work in what's left of this flour. There we go. Okay. All right. Here is my cohesive lump of dough. You can see the butter starting to kind of melt a little because I used my hands. So it's good that this is gonna go sit in the fridge for an hour and I'm gonna kind of flatten it out so it gets really cold on the plate, in the fridge for an hour. And then I'm gonna come back in a half hour so that I can video making the filling. So that's gonna need your half a cup of cooked crumbled bacon and then everything else on the ingredients list. So I'll see you back in about 30 minutes. Okay, it's time to make the filling. This is actually pretty easy. It does say to use a mixer and I'm going to do that today. I thought about just mixing it by hand so I wouldn't have to get this thing out, but here we are. <laughs> I really should have undone this first, but that's okay. All right, plug this in. There is no shortage of outlets on this side of the kitchen. They're everywhere. Okay, to make the filling, we're gonna use a mixer to beat our two eggs right here. Boy, that's a noise. All right. Lifting the bowl. All right. We're also gonna add in the brown sugar and the salt. That is a half a cup of brown sugar and like a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna move this down to stir. There we go. And you're gonna mix that together until it gets really, really smooth. Okay. This might take a little bit. Sometimes it takes a little bit for the sugar to get incorporated into the egg. Waiting for this to get done is always like the hardest part for me. Anyway, it's two large eggs, but I mean, you know, whatever, whatever you have. Or if you're not into eggs, applesauce. I don't think applesauce is going to change the flavor of this. So there we go. Almost there. Oh, 
once the sugar and the eggs reach a consistency that's really smooth, you're going to add in your maple syrup, apple cider, and vinegar. Now I already, or your apple cider vinegar, or just cider vinegar, your maple syrup, and your molasses. I already dumped my tablespoon of molasses into my maple syrup. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I feel like I have to yell over it, the vacuum cleaner and the oven, which is on. Now, they probably want you to use real maple syrup. I have the butter flavor maple syrup that you put on like pancakes. So that's what I used. Also, I have brownies in the oven, a new recipe that I kind of made up that I'm trying. It smells good. <laughs> All right, a teaspoon of cider vinegar. It didn't say apple cider, but that was the only, like, that's it, right? Essentially, we're kind of making what I feel like is a bacon jam. Can't go wrong with bacon jam if you've never had it before. It's so good. And then you've got your four tablespoons of melted butter that you're also gonna mix in. All right. Then once that's good and mixed up, you're gonna add your bacon. You're gonna stir in your half a cup of bacon. Mine's in this bag because I made it earlier. Crumbled it and stuck it in the fridge. All right. Honestly, a half a cup just didn't seem like enough bacon to me, but I'm going with it because I've never made this recipe before. Okay, that's it. It's a soupy, goopy, weird looking mix, but it smells good. So we're gonna go with it. All right, next step, if your dough is finished in the fridge, chilling for that hour, we're gonna get it out. You're gonna need your rolling pin, your mat if you use one, and your dough, plus a lightly greased 12 cupcake pan or two sixes. Um, I'm just gonna spray mine with cooking spray because why not? That's easy and we're all about easy here. So I will, <laughs> there's always a cat running past. I will see you back in a couple minutes. Okay, I have the dough, I have our mat, I have the rolling pin. Preheat your oven to 375. And then we are going to roll this crust out and one eighth of an inch, woo, that was loud, one eighth of an inch thick. Oh my gosh, this is a really strong dough. <laughs> this is gonna take a little bit of, of uh, strength to roll out. And I don't have to make it a circle or a rectangle this time. I can get it messy. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It just needs to be an eighth of an inch thick because we're cutting out circles. If you couldn't find a four inch round circular cutter, go ahead and just roll it up into little balls and press it into your muffin tins like so. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. I will do at least one of those like that. The rest I'm probably just gonna cut out. You may need to flour the surface if it's getting sticky because of that butter. Let's get my flour duster out here. I need to refill my flour container. It's getting a little low. There we go. Okay, move this over here. That makes it a little easier. <laughs> it's a very dense pie crust type of dough. So, so I'm trying to keep it all contained in one area. It's not working very well. You know what? I probably should have gone halvesies with it. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to rip part of this off and uh, just kind of go halvesies and see if that's a little bit better. Okay. I should have floured the surface too. Let's do that real fast because you don't wanna be ripping it up while you're trying to get it into your um, muffin pans. So we're just gonna go like so. 
Do you have any more in here? I do not. I really need to remember to take my watch off when I'm doing stuff like this. Cleaning the flower out of the dial is real fun. <laughs> okay. Now remember, this is the rolling pin that I hated at first um, when I got it. I really only got it for the mat. It came along with the mat. But I'm starting to love it because it does the measurements for me. It has these adjustable, like these ends come off and then it's got these rings. And when the rings are on the ground, you're rolling it out to that specific thickness. So these red rings are an eighth of an inch. And when those are on the surface, I know it's done like that. All right, let's see how many circles I can get here. That's one, two, Three, can I get five? No, nope, I can get three and a slightly wonky one. Okay, put these down in here. Try not to put your finger <laughs> through the edges, okay? You want them down in there, but watch those fingernails and then you can kind of pinch off the excess um, theirs was all fluted and pretty on the edge. Mine are not going to be like that. They're going to be wonky. doesn't matter. It's going to taste the same, whether it looks like it does in their professional photos or, uh, <laughs> or not. It's going to taste the same. You're adding the same ingredients. It's just going to look a little different. And maybe you have more patience than I do. And you can sit here and play with these edges and make them pretty. I don't know if you can see. See mine? A little wonky. That's okay. It's gonna taste good. This is a very thick, I honestly thought it would be a little more thin as far as thickness goes. You know, maybe I'll try to flute some of these edges. There, that one looks almost pretty. Okay, that didn't, uh, that honestly wasn't that hard. I press it down in the middle and then I just start folding the edges up. I'm kind of pushing in every so often, making sure that the bottom is in there. Okay, that didn't go as well as the last one. That's okay. We're doing the thing. And then you grab your scraps, put it all in a ball, roll it out again. Try to ignore your email alarm going off because it's Sunday and you don't have to answer email on a Sunday. Nobody should ever have to answer email on a Sunday. I'm going to try to get two out of this one. Can I do it? Yes, I can, I think. That's one. Yep. That's two. Okay, same general idea. I guess it does get easier the more you play with it. They're still not going to look pretty. I'm taking a gamble on this recipe, King Arthur, so hopefully it's a good one. And I know that last week they released their recipe of the year and I think it's like a chocolate chip cookie so you know we're gonna have to try that it's not on the original 52 list that I picked out but I think we can add an extra week of baking in it's not gonna kill us right okay so you want to work fast with your crust because again you don't want your butter to be melting it's okay if it takes you a while if you notice that your butter is starting to get kind of melty Finish getting them in the tins and then put your tins in the fridge for 20 minutes. You want that butter nice and cold when it goes into the oven so that you get that flaky crust. See, my rolling pin is sticking. I know normally I have a lot more to say during this process, but this is kind of a workout today. I don't, this is a very dense dough. <laughs> oh, it's very dense. 
I wonder if that's from the wheat flour. Now I'm only getting two at a time. That's okay. Not gonna be perfect. This does feel really thick to me. I mean, I'm not a professional baker, but this is a, this is a thick crust. Okay, if you don't have your, your circle cutter, try to get your ball in a dough and just kinda press it out as well as you can with your hands or roll it out and then you're just gonna kind of stretch it into a circle. I don't know, I had a job at a pizza place in high school and this dough has already been worked so much, it's not really doing it. Um, you know what, we'll do that last, that one last. So I had a job at a pizza place in high school and we used to have to, the dough would come in frozen in these um, round balls on trays. There'd just, just be stacks of trays in the walk-in freezer and we would have to stretch the dough. That was a lot of flour. Oh well. And I got really good. Like I could toss pizza dough up in the air. And that was fun. That was a fun job. I really enjoyed that one a lot. I worked with some really great people and uh, some not great people, but most of them are pretty great. I'm still friends with a few, so that's pretty great when you have a job in high school, you know, a really, really, really long time ago, 30 years ago, and you're still friends with them. That's, that's a rare thing. Hopefully, can I get three? I can get two. All right, we're down to two. I need two more. It's going to be a stretch. And this one, has a, this one has a piece missing. It's fine. It's absolutely okay. We're just, we're just getting them in there at this point. All right, two more left to go. Well, one more and then we're gonna try to roll one by hand. So what you do is you roll the ball, put it in the bottom of your, of your little muffin tin there, and then you start pressing and you press in the center and you kind of smooth it towards the edges and then you press up. You still have to have a greased pan, so it's gonna get messy. Try not to work that grease into your dough. Um, Cause remember, we're pulling these out. So these are, that's why I added so much cooking spray. Oof, this is gonna be a stretch to get these last two. I was worried that I was gonna have too much dough and now I'm worried that I'm not gonna have enough. I'm going to have to roll it out one more time. Okay. That's okay. It's fine. I've got enough to make one. You know what? We'll try to do this one the way I described. Okay. Let me get this one in here. Okay. I'm still going to flatten it out a little bit. I'm going to stick this in and then I'm gonna push in the center. And it, by pushing in the center, I don't know if you can see this, um, it's already pushing it up the walls of the muffin tin. And so I'm just gonna keep pushing. It's not gonna be pretty, but, and then you can just take a knife and kind of cut the edges off that stick up too much. This has an awful lot of dough. So watch how much dough you put in here. You can always add more. It's a little bit harder to get it to the correct thickness if you add too much. And then I'm just gonna kind of pinch off what's overflowing the top here. <laughs> that was tricky and I definitely recommend cutting it first. Again, a drinking glass, try to get it as close to four inches as possible. A mason jar, you know, those wide lid wide mouth mason jars would work, but there it is. Okay, now we're gonna add our filling. Two thirds of the way full. Um, 
I'm going to use a spoon for this because I just, I know that if I try to pour this, actually I'll use a scoop. I know that if I try to pour this, it's gonna get everywhere. It's gonna be a big goopy mess. This is ugly, by the way. This looks, well, I'm not gonna tell you what this looks like. You'll be able to see all on your own. Um, Cause this is not, this is not an appetizing look by any means. Oh, that is all the way full. So too much in that one. This is gonna be a right mess to clean up. Um, try to make sure that one's full too. Okay. Ooh, hi. Um, it's future Katie interrupting past Katie because past Katie made a big mistake here. Don't fill your cups up all the way. Two thirds is what the recipe calls for. Two thirds is what you need to do because if you don't, they're not gonna bake right. These should not be ooey and gooey in the middle. Mm. And you shouldn't eat them if they are because that egg is not cooked and you're not gonna feel well for the rest of the day. Ask me how I know. The flavor was great, but I didn't bake these long enough. I didn't cook them all the way through and I paid the price. So learn from my mistakes and make sure you fill them up two thirds of the way and bake them all the way through, okay? All right, good luck. I'll get it right on like the last one. Um, try to make sure you're getting bacon in each, in each cup. Oh my gosh, it is getting everywhere. This is, this is unexpectedly messy. Um, that's okay. Crossing our fingers that it's gonna taste fantastic. Okay, two thirds. I got one that's two thirds and it only took me four tries. I'll mess this next one up though. Okay, that's also a little, I would imagine with the eggs, it's probably going to rise some as those eggs cook. There we go, that one's also too full. I cannot get this right. Okay, that one's a little bit better. I'm still making a mess and getting this everywhere. <laughs> Good times, I'm so glad I picked a nice, clean recipe for today. Oh, why not? I've overfilled all of them. Might as well overfill that one too. I'm going to put these in the oven on cookie sheets. Usually I don't do that. Um, but with the rate of overflow, I'm going to do it this time. And how goopy and messy. It's the molasses and the maple syrup. That's why we have extra goopy going on here. <laughs> this is a mess. Well, that one's gonna have a nice big chunk of bacon in it. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna put a little bit more in this one, I'm gonna to top off just a few of these because they look so much less full compared to all the others, so why not? Have a feeling that this is gonna be a gigantic, ugly mess, but if it tastes as good as it smells, gosh, I really want all the bacon bits in there too. This one needs bacon, there we go. If it tastes as good as it smells, then we're gonna be golden. Hang tight, I'm gonna grab my baking dishes to put these on and you may wanna do that too. If it does overflow, if you filled it too much, that's gonna be a mess in your oven. Put them on a baking dish. I'll be right back. Baking dish secured. All right. These are gonna go in the oven for 18 minutes. And we are gonna cross our fingers on how this turns out. 375, 18 minutes, here we go. I'm going center rack, setting my timer. All right, 18 minutes. Gonna toss my little itty bitty bit of leftover dough here. Um, the crust is gonna be golden, which is gonna be hard to tell if you used regular wheat flour, but I mean, give it your best shot. And the filling is gonna be bubbling or so it says on the recipe. Yes, the filling will be bubbly. Then you're gonna take them out of the oven and cool completely before you take them out of the tins. So I'll see you back in about 
mm, 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I can't do math today. I'm wearing a beanie because my hair is, yeah, this is as good as it's going to get today. I'll see you back when they're coming out of the oven. And we're back. I had to bake my tarts probably five to seven minutes longer than the 18 minutes listed in the recipe. And that's okay. I just, I really wanted the insides to be really bubbly and I just had a little bit of bubbling at 18 minutes. So I let it go on. They've cooled off. I've pulled them out of the pans and this is what we have. And I'm really excited about this. Um, I've already cut into it and we're gonna try a little taste. It smells weird, but good. Um, the inside is kind of like a, it's kind of like a custard consistency with bacon um, mixed in. <laughs> wow. Mm. I don't know how to describe this. Um, you've got a muted sweetness. I know we put in a lot of sugar, that half a cup of packed brown sugar, that's a lot. So you have some sweetness to it, but then you have um, not a heaviness of the molasses. I feel like the butter kind of raises that, because you know, molasses is a really heavy flavor, but I feel like the butter really lightened that up a little bit. And then you have the saltiness of the bacon and the crust is super flaky. Um, this is, I don't know how to describe this flavor. I haven't ever had anything like this. Bacon jam would be as close as I could come to it. And even bacon jam has a little bit of a, a kick to it and, and some saltiness and a little bit of bitterness from the vinegar that goes into it. This is really light, surprisingly. It's very light. It's really flaky and you're just gonna have to bake it yourself and try it so that you can figure out what this flavor is. And then drop it in the comments what, how you would describe what this is because I'm at a loss for words. But I am gonna call this a thumbs up winning bake two weeks in a row now. Super happy about that. And yeah, comment, tell me, did you like this recipe or not? Is this a keeper? Are you gonna do something with this? You know, with the last recipes that we've done, I've talked about different flavor combinations that you could have. Um, with this one, I don't think that there is anything that you could substitute for the bacon. I thought maybe sausage, but then it would be really spicy. And I don't think that that would play well with the sweetness, but that's just me. Play with it and see, I don't know. But I will tell you that the bacon is really good. I don't like how the consistency looks. Um, it's a little off-putting, kind of gelatinous. Um, <laughs> custard is not supposed to be this color, <laughs> but, but it tastes good. And the texture is not displeasing to me either. I'm kind of a texture weirdo. So winning bake. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you had fun, if you baked along, even if you didn't bake along, but you wanna see more recipes because this has only been one month of recipes, hit the subscribe button and tune in next Saturday when we have our fifth bake of the year. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because off the top of my brain, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. But I do know that it's gonna be February and I'm doing some Valentine's themed stuff. So it's gonna be all lovey-dovey and covered in pink hearts, I'm sure. I'm kidding, it's not. But it is gonna be a Valentine's themed bake, okay? Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next week. Be sure to follow along with our Facebook page because every Wednesday I post the ingredient list for Saturday's bake. So you can find the ingredient list over there and be sure to check out the previous three videos in the series. I am having so much fun with this baking challenge and I hope that you are too. I'll see you next week.